Hello viewers at home and thank you once again for joining us on this episode of Dinner Guide. I am your host Chef Andy and today we are going to be bringing a nice beautiful Swahili um, Indian kind of marriage to this particular dish. We are going to be making a very very simple and humble beef biryani. But before we get to the first step of cooking the dish, the second step sorry, we are going to begin by introducing what we will be working with today to give you a broader understanding of what to expect. So we're going to start from the very front where we have some turmeric powder and some red food color. I've also got some cloves there, a bit of some minced ginger and some chutney. We've also got some paprika powder, one stock cube and some cinnamon sticks. We're also going to be using some dana jira, some jira seeds and, and one piece of scotch bonnet chili. We'll need also a few garlic cloves, a small onion and two tomatoes. You'll also require some cooked basmati rice that's already cooled off. You also require about 200 grams of some meat, which we're going to trim off, of course. Some fresh coriander there, a bit of salt for cooking, and some pepper, some salt for seasoning, and last but not least, some water, which we're going to be using through our cooking process. But before we get that far, I will give you this chance to grab your pens and papers, and we come back, we're going to dive right into this dish. See you after a short while. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. If you're just tuning in and you missed out on the introduction to the show, we're going to be working on a beef biryani. Remember for those of you who may not be able to find all the particular ingredients required for this very traditional and very um, oriental dish, we're going to be improvising with some of the basic ones that you may be able or should be able to find in your regular retail stores. And we're going to start off this simple process by trimming our meat. So I'm going to be using a side, uh, a silver side of beef. But before we proceed, we're going to start off by trimming some of this excess fat on the sides. So we're just going to take those apart and proceed to cut our meat into some nice one inch chunks. Proceed to do the same with the rest of the meat. So for this particular dish, uh, ribeye was particularly a very good option for the fact that it does have a nice beautiful chunkiness to it. It does also have a very, very beautiful uh, rind there of, of, of fat that will actually aid in giving your dish quite a very, very beautiful texture. All right, so proceed to cube your beef as you did for the first piece. And of course, this being said, uh, no particular technique in cutting the meat. We're just going to cut it into some big chunks. Remember, this will be cooking for a bit of time. So always very important to cut your meat in chunks, especially if you're going to be braising it or stewing it. So just to go right through the last and final piece. Of course, discarding any excess fat that you will not require for this dish particularly. Now proceed to finish by chopping that up and we're just going to proceed to discard the rest. So very, very simply begin by heating up your pots and to that we will proceed to add a bit of some cooking oil, about one tablespoon to one and a half in particular. Next up, we're going to just quickly move our meat out of the way. And of course, be sure to turn your board around, especially for this particular part of the process. This will actually aid you in avoiding any contamination. And next up, I'm going to start the process by just roughly chopping up some three garlic cloves. So 
So be sure to chop that to the smallest size possible. Once that's done, proceed to add that to your cooking pot. Now next up, we're going to proceed to add some of our raw herbs. And I'm going to quickly just pour those into a pestle and mortar on the side here. Remember, we do have some fennel seeds and some uh, cinnamon sticks that we need to break up. We also have some cloves there. Also going to add that to the mixture. And very simply, using your pestle, proceed to pound everything together. Of course, being very vigilant to pay attention to your pot. Once your garlic just starts to color, proceed to mix that through. And proceed to add your meat at this stage. Now proceed to mix everything together. And at this stage, adding a bit of cooking oil. Now for this particular stage, we're going to start by coloring our meat. So very, very importantly, be sure to continue to doing so at high heat. Remember for this particular stage, the only particular thing you're looking at is browning your meat. Remember we are going to take it off the heat very, very slightly. We're going to also continue to blend in the aromas from the ingredients that are remaining. And then we're going to proceed to add the beef a little later into the dish. Right, while your beef continues to brown in your pot, proceed to finish off your raw spices. Right, once that's done, you can reserve that on the side. Proceed to brown your beef. Now this should actually cook for anywhere between four to five minutes, allowing your meat to cook to medium stage. Proceed to mix through once more. Right, so your meat has now been cooking for about four minutes. We're going to allow just an extra minute of this while, of course, proceeding to mix through. And once it's nicely, beautifully colored and it's cooked almost to medium, proceed to turn down your temperature and proceed to remove your meat from the heat. Of course, being sure to reserve any particular liquid or fluids that may be in your pot, in the pot, and proceed to return that to the heat. So this we're going to allow to rest for just a little bit giving us a bit of time to continue to work with the rest of our ingredients. So to start that off, about a tablespoon of some minced ginger, a bit of some dana jeera powder. Proceed to also add your raw spices. 
and proceed to give that a mix. Your pan at this stage should be quite a bit dry, so proceed to add in a bit more cooking oil. And you can now lower your temperature to low and just proceed to mix everything in your pot. Of course, allowing that beautiful rustic grounding of the meat and that browning of the meat to really now come into flavor with some of the ingredients in your pot. While that continues, we're going to add a small pinch of water. Remember, this particularly will help in breaking down the flavors. Also helps in reconstituting any flavors that may be on the sides of your pot. And now to proceed, we're going to add our stock cube, our paprika powder, and our chutney. Now this is just regular onion chutney that we're using to really bring up a nice beautiful sweetness to the dish. Now at this stage you should be able to get a nice beautiful fragrance from the fennel seeds. You should actually be able to get that beautiful jira aroma in your kitchen at, the, at this point. Now if you can be able to see that from the cameras, it should actually start to constitute into a nice pasty consistency. And once you've achieved this, proceed to grab your browned meat and add that to your pot. Of course now bring your heat to medium mixing through thoroughly once making sure to get that beautiful chutney coating right around the meat and now we're going to proceed to add our other ingredients starting with some red onion so this I'm just going to cut into four quarters be sure to take the stems off completely Just using the palm of your hands, proceed to break your onion into your pot. Of course, opening up that onion flour very well. Now this particular technique of adding onions in this size will aid in particularly giving you a nice beautiful presentation. And to that, we're going to proceed to add some of our tomatoes. So proceed by first cutting those into wedges. And now cube them into one inch cubes. Proceed to do the same for the other piece. Right, now at this stage you should actually have a nice beautiful consistency coming up to almost the last and final stage of preparation of the biryani. Now to that, proceed to simply add your whole tomatoes and of course your scotch bonnet chili. We're going to add that whole Remember particularly something also to remember with chilies, using it as a whole piece will actually give it quite a bit of flavor without actually making the dish too hot and consumable. Right, at this stage your mixture will completely dry out, so be sure to add in slightly a little bit of water. Remember you can also alternate using water for beef stock or chicken stock or vegetable stock. All 
All right, now all we're going to do for this mixture is we're going to allow that to continue cooking, giving some time for the tomatoes to completely break down and also giving the liquid a bit of time to be absorbed. And then we're going to take a very, very sh short break, but when we do come back, I am going to show you the last and final technique of basically using your food color to color the rice and how to assemble the dish working towards the last and final step, which is a plating. But please don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. If you're just tuning into the show, we've been working on a very, very simple dish here, which we're not about at the last and final stage. We're working on a very simple beef biryani recipe. But now we're going to get to the last and final stage where we're going to proceed to layer over our rice. So this you will proceed to spread out right over your meat mixture in the pot so I'm using about one cup of rice to this dish remember the rice is pre-cooked so very very simply I'm just going to spread that right over the meat of course allowing this to sit at very low heat we are also going to proceed to combine our colors once more so very very simply begin by adding a bit of some turmeric to your first pot and a bit of the red food color to the second and now proceed to add a very small amount of water which should aid you in mixing the colors so in with the red and do the same for the yellow And once completely combined and you can't see any more of the powder, proceed to pour over the rice on one side and finish by adding the rest. And at this stage you can actually now proceed to turn off your heat completely. Very simply using a spoon proceed to work your way through the mixture, of course making sure to get those colors absorbed completely. And now all you're left to do is proceed to plate this. So I'm just going to begin by moving our piece of chili right out of the way. Remember we were using a scotch bonnet chili. This is a particularly very hot chili. It actually falls under the many, many hot chilies that are offered in the world. But for this particular reason, we, we used it whole. This is just to give the food a bit of flavor without really impacting, with, impacting the plate with a, a lot of heat. And once that is done, proceed to very simply move your mixture to your plate. to the last bit and by this time your meat is nicely fully cooked very very tender and as I mentioned earlier in the show for this particular recipe you can alternatively use uh, beef filet you can use sirloin you can use rump these are all particularly beautiful cuts of meat that are very tender and they go very very well with a very simple dish as a biryani or a beef curry so just to finish that off very simply grab some coriander leaf and proceed to chop that very coarsely and you can now proceed to sprinkle that right over your dish and finish lastly 
by setting your chili right over the side. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a very, very simple and easy recipe that you can all try at home. Do actually try it out. Send us your feedback. If you do have any queries pertaining this dish, remember we do have a Facebook page. Do leave your comments, queries, or any particular questions pertaining the dish. We are more than welcome to get back to you. But from the studios, it's I, Chef Andy, bidding you farewell. And until the next episode, have a lovely evening and see you soon. Thank you.